This small flashlight is very useful, especially in emergencies. It's simple and easy to build and in this episode I will test the components and I will show you how to build one. I got a new bug boost converter for this project. It has some great features, the most important one is the input voltage between 1.8 and 5.5 volts. So it can be easily powered with a lithium ion cell for projects that need a stable 3.3 or 5 volts output. I got the 3.3 volts version for my project. The flashlight housing will be made from a simple PVC pipe with a diameter of 32 mm. It cost only 40 cents at a local hardware store. I will cut it on both ends and the remaining part has a length of 13.5 cm, so I can fit it in my pocket. I need some good LEDs that don't produce a lot of heat, because there isn't room inside this flashlight for a heatsink. So I bought a 10 pack of 10 mm LEDs with only 0.77 US dollars plus shipping, and I will use 7 of these LEDs. I need a panel to mount the LEDs. This piece of perf board should be good enough, but it needs to be round. I will cut the corners of the board with my useless underpowered rotary tool. It's not a perfect circle yet, so I will use some sandpaper to finish the job and make the edge smoother. The perf board is finished, let's test it. The flashlight doesn't need a lens, because these LEDs have a big round head and can focus the light. I just need to arrange them on the board to fit as many as possible. I can use maximum 7 LEDs, just be careful not to mix the polarities between the LEDs. The middle LED doesn't fit perfectly, it will sit 1 mm forward because they have a bigger edge, but it doesn't really matter. I finished soldering but I need to trim some of these LEDs because they have this big edge on the side. These LEDs are rated at 3.2 volts, but I will power them with a little more than that. At 3.26 volts they use 2.15 watts. And at 3.3 volts these LEDs draw 2.2 watts of power. But a lithium ion cell doesn't deliver a stable voltage. It has between 4.2 volts when fully charged and minimum around 2.5 volts depending on the protection circuit. That's why this bug boost converter is so good. My DIY variable power supply represents a lithium ion cell. You can see that no matter the state of charge of the lithium ion cell, the converter will decrease or increase the battery voltage to deliver a stable 3.3 volts and the LEDs will work with the same intensity. But the converter draws more current when the battery is discharged. So what is the efficiency of this converter for this project? Lithium ion cells have a nominal voltage between 3.6 and 3.7 volts. At this voltage the converter draws 766 milliamps, so 2.77 watts of power from the battery. And we know that the LEDs use 2.2 watts at 3.3 volts. So the average efficiency of this converter with a small load is 79%. I was expecting a slightly better efficiency, but it is what it is. The converter does its job with a small price to pay in wasted energy. But these LEDs are supposed to work with 3.2 volts. What would happen if I powered them with 3.3 volts? I left the converter power them with 3.3 volts for 10 minutes and they are fine. The LEDs only warmed up a bit. If you want, you can add a small value ceramic resistor in series with the LEDs to decrease the current a bit, but the light intensity will also decrease. So let's leave it as it is. Before mounting the LED panel, I need to make a small cutout for the switch. I will use two parts adhesive to mount the LED panel, but first I will add some adhesive on the wire joints so they don't accidentally break off the board. And now some adhesive on the LED panel and inside the PVC pipe.
While the glue dries, let's check the charging module. A TP4056 module is good enough to charge a single lithium ion cell. You can use it with a USB Type-C or a micro USB connector. Let's test it. I will use my DIY simple volt ammeter. 3.15 volts is the battery voltage. And the default charging current is 1.06 amps. The TP4056 IC will get hot when charging with 1 amp and I don't want that inside the flashlight. To lower the charging current we need to change the R3 programmable resistor according to this table or formula. I will use my big and ugly soldering gun to remove this tiny resistor. The original 1.2 kilo ohm resistor is replaced with these two resistors which have a combined value of 1.33 kilo ohm. Let's test it again. The charging current has decreased from 1.06 amps to 0.94 amps. So when I charge the lithium ion cell, the integrated circuit will produce less heat inside the flashlight. I need to modify this PVC cap to fit it in the back of the flashlight, so I will cut most of it. This is how it looks after using some sandpaper and cleaning it. I will mount the charging module in the back, so I need to make two holes for the charging port and LED. I will stick the converter to the charging module and mount both of them in the back. This way it's also easier to connect the wires. The modules can be glued in position with super glue or two parts adhesive. Instead of replacing the small LEDs from the charging module, I will cover both of them with transparent hot glue all the way to the back and I will also fill the small hole in the panel. Now I can see the charge status of the battery. I cut a small piece of PVC pipe and I will force it into the small cap. This will be the mounting system for the back cover. I also need to glue it to the PVC cap. I will use a small switch, but the pins are too long, I need to cut them. I sanded down the remaining pins, so they wouldn't be sharp. And I will also insulate the soldering joints with adhesive, to eliminate the possibility of a short circuit. The switch will be connected between the output of the charging module, because it also has battery protections, and the input of the converter. I'll add some adhesive on all the wire joints to protect them. You can also use hot glue for this. At first I wanted to use an 18650 battery holder, but it doesn't fit. So I will solder a lithium ion cell directly. This is an old cell, it came with nickel strips already attached and I used it a lot of times to test different projects. Let's see what capacity it still has. I will test it with my Opus charger and after a few cycles it has a real capacity of 2.85 amp hours. That's pretty good considering it's an old used cell. I soldered some wires to the nickel strips and I will cover the cell with Kepton tape. Just to be sure the cell housing, which is the negative terminal, will never make contact with the switch pins. I'll add some sticky cushioning pads on the battery terminals, so it will stay firmly in place. To partially remove the cheap look of this flashlight, I will cover it with two pieces of matte black vinyl. And the LED flashlight is finished, it's very small so you can carry it in your pocket. When you connect the charger, the red LED turns on. It takes about 3.5 hours to charge it. And when the battery is fully charged, the blue LED turns on. With a 2.85 amp hours battery and an average efficiency of 79%, this 2.2 watts flashlight should last 3 hours and 40 minutes. In reality it will last a little less than that. 
but this is an old used lithium ion cell. With a new one it would last longer. Even so, this flashlight is useful in emergencies and it was pretty cheap to build. If you enjoyed this video, please share it and leave a comment below. And I want to thank all my patrons for their support. If you want to see these videos a few days earlier and more DIY videos and updates about my future projects, check out my Patreon page. So thanks for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye!